Greetings Star Citizens and welcome to another beautiful day in the verse. Now, although this is one thing that I said I wouldn't do, today I'm doing somewhat a tutorial on racing. Though it's not really going to be a tutorial because it's going to be made redundant and I have said in the past I don't want to make a, a racing tutorial or a racing video because it's all going to change when we get 2.6 which hopefully if they stick to their plan will be in a couple days time. Now, with that being said, I've got a lot of requests on Reddit and I've got a few comments on, um, on YouTube and I've also got a few people on Twitch that just keep asking for it. So I figured I would give a little bit of sort of, not so much a tutorial, but just how I learnt because Every racer in this game most likely started out very rough. I know personally I did. I could hardly fly in a straight line, let alone get around the track. So the recording is live for this video. So I do apologize for my clicky keyboard. I have a very loud mechanical keyboard and there is literally nothing I can do to drown out that sound. So I do apologize in advance, but getting on to the tutorial. So. For M50 users specifically, one thing that definitely helps, at least for 2.5, I don't know if this will be fixed in 2.6, but the engines bug out every single time. And I can't really show you what I mean by that because I've uh, already fixed it, but actually I can show you, I, I can kill myself. Um, so if we're ready up, so the engines plug out where when you boost forward you go up slightly and you get kind of a fishtail effect. Two, and the way to fix one, that is to press the go. six key twice to sort of disable and enable your engine. So if I just kill myself here, uh, I, I can show you what it means. Because every time you respawn you will have to do it. And of course the M50 is clearly made out of titanium metal as it refuses to destroy itself. Um, but yeah, now we haven't. So if I just go forward, you can see it goes up. So I did not move the mouse then, but it went up. And I would have to fight that and then it would fishtail. And also when I boost, you can see it goes up. That I did not move my mouse up then, it just went up on itself. If I just quickly disable and enable them, then I can boost forward and it will go forward. There's no fishtail effect and for M50 users, that's practically a must. You are just at a disadvantage if you're trying to do it the other way. So, getting more into the purpose of this video. So, what I did to learn, what I did to get over the learning curve is I started flying around the track at about 50% throttle, I think. And this is using the M50. Obviously, if you're using a slower ship, you could probably get away with more than 50%. But I started flying around the track like this. 50% roll and boost. Now, looking at the way I fly today, this is extremely boring and I would say that this didn't teach me anything, but it did. It taught me quite a lot about the track. It taught me about all the checkpoints. It taught me about just getting through the track in one piece. And you can see if I boost the whole time, which you can totally get away with, in 2.5 but you won't be able to get away with it in 2.6 um, you can see there's like absolutely no drift and it is just it's easy mode and like I say you could go higher than 50 50% uh, if you wanted you could try 60% 70% maybe you're comfortable going 100% but just not with the afterburner the afterburner is where it gets tricky so this is literally what I did so for those that just think that you know the top tier racers are naturally good we're not we, we we grinded as well we got through the rough patch and it is all just mainly memory muscle i would say is the biggest sort of aspect into racing is just getting the memory muscle of how much do you need to turn at a particular checkpoint what what point do you need to start space breaking what point you know do you stop space breaking all this stuff it is just all repetition and you get it through practice so i'm gonna skip but essentially what i did is i did the whole track in 60 percent for all then i went up to 70 percent and then 80 percent and 90 percent etc up until i was comfortable at 100 percent so now we're doing 100 percent but with boost and you can see 
At 100% it gets a little tricky. I lost my boost there for some reason, but it gets a little tricky and you also want to try and sort of implement the stuff you would do if you was space break um, if you was afterburning. So using space break at the times that you would space break afterburning. Now obviously if you're new to racing you're not gonna know where you should and shouldn't space break and this is also dependent on the ship that you're flying because obviously every ship flies differently than M M50 can get away with a lot less space break than a 350R and so can a Mustang. A Mustang can get away with practically no space break or no space break at all. So yeah I mean to the way I fly now this is boring but like I say to people who are beginning and just starting out this is a good way of just getting used to the track because that's also the biggest aspect to racing it isn't necessarily just the skill it's getting ready uh, getting familiar with the track getting familiar with exactly where the checkpoints is to the point where you know where all the checkpoints are off by heart you shouldn't be relying on the laser arrows that are guiding you around the track you should be relying on memory you should know exactly where the checkpoints are and how to get to them so this is literally how I used to race. I used to race in public races like this where I did not use afterburner because I was terrified of using afterburner. And the lap time is decent. I mean, I'm getting, what is it, like minute lap times? It's decent if you look at the arena commander. I mean, not many people get that good lap times unless you're against someone that is sort of like on the top tier or you know they're trying to work towards the top tier of racing most of the time you get people that are just trying to farm REC and they're not actually trying to race so like I said I sound like a broken record now but like I said this is literally what I did I did this for hours and hours and hours and I spent weeks like this I flew around the track like this for weeks and what I did is I slowly started implementing the afterburner so I would say it's sort of like this point the straight I felt comfortable I would you know afterburn through this straight and then I would sort of come down here and then I would stop afterburning and I would go to boost and I would come around here and I'd boost up here obviously that's the wrong way to do it in the M50 I should be space breaking there but at the time I didn't know so I'm sort of going a little bit into the past and sort of how I used to fly not so much how I fly now just so you can get a little idea of how I learned because a lot of the way I learned I didn't learn from videos and I recommend learning from videos that way you don't pick up any bad habits because there are a lot of bad habits that I picked up and I had to break and the only reason I knew how to break them is I started watching videos like Shive and Showtime uh, I'll leave a link to those videos in the description below so you can check those out those two are far better than me at racing and I just watched their videos to figure out the racing line, to figure out where they break, to figure out what to do, and then I can try and sort of mimic it. Now, obviously, it's not going to be as good as theirs because they've got the timing down, but you can sort of you can learn from the same racing line that they're racing with, and that way you don't start developing any bad habits. So one of the bad habits that I developed is on that second checkpoint. I didn't space break because I felt comfortable not space breaking. I felt safer without the space break. But you can see, like I said, lap times, they're not horribly bad. Now, obviously, they're nowhere near top 25. They're probably not even top 100. Though, yeah, yeah, they're probably not top 100. But it is a lap time and it is something to sort of work off so once I got comfortable with that I started space breaking more and like I said I picked up that here you should space break and I started after burning more and I got familiar with this corner so that I could take that without any space break then I got familiar with this bit so I could go well actually no it didn't used to go down here I used to go a different way I'll show you that on the next lap but then I got familiar with going around here which I completely messed up one of the side effects of doing this live is you look like an idiot. Well, not live, but 
I think I'm stuck. Oh no, it's just enabled the uh, flight landing mode. As well as the ultimate extreme is you could fly around in landing mode. But um but yeah, I got familiar with this. Now one thing that I would definitely recommend, and this is something that a lot of people don't do, is and this only applies for 2.5 by the way, but you should afterburn or at least boost because it reduces your drift and it helps you out a bunch. You see that checkpoint, I space break. This one I don't, some people do, it really depends how comfortable you are. But like I said, I used to go around this way and this way works as well. I've seen a few sort of top tier races. But the only problem with this is you run into that pole that becomes a little bit of an obstacle. And the thing with flying fast is the thing you're going to have to deal with is that. I deal with that a lot because that is your enemy. You know, once you've figured out the track, once you can actually get around the track, the challenge then becomes getting around it without blacking out. And that is something that even I struggle with. Uh, Shive struggles with it, Blinky struggles with it, Showtime struggles with it. It is a struggle because you can push yourself to the limit and when you're trying to get the best lap time you have to. So yeah, I used to go down that left side but now I go down this way instead. And for me to stop the blackout, I do apply a bit of space break here. It's not the fastest way of doing it, but it is a way of actually getting around the track without blacking out. Sometimes I do still black out depending how much or little I do space break, but it gets me around the track. And like I said, obviously you're not going to learn it as quick as this. For me, it took me months of trying and I would race for hours every single day I'd wake up and I would do literally about six hours of racing every single day for several months before I felt like I was comfortable and I've been doing this for a lot but I didn't record any of it because I felt it was sort of it wasn't really impressive to record I kind of regret no, there we go I kind of regret not recording it because it would have shown a little bit more of how I sort of developed over time. Now obviously I'm not the best racer but I'm fairly good and I would consider myself a top tier although I'm nowhere near the top I'm only 18th but I would say I've got the skills I just need to get the timings and the muscle memory and all of that stuff down but the fundamentals for me are there and that just takes time it takes time, it takes practice, it takes repetition and I would recommend people that don't have something like an M50 or a 350R or any sort of decent racing chip, I would recommend doing all of your practice in public matches and then that way you're earning REC. You might be failing and you might be struggling to you know, do anything good and you might be getting completely destroyed every time but you are going to be earning REC and then you can use that to buy something like an M50 and you can then start practicing. I definitely recommend practicing public even if you're going to be bad, even if you're going to be coming last every time. It's still worth doing and then drone sim I would recommend once you have the fundamentals. Once you can get around the track with a decent lap time that's when you should sort of go to drone sim and try and fine tune it, try and find out you know, what can you do to shave off seconds, what what points should you space break. So for those M50 users out here I'm going to try to do a lap and I'm going to try to talk about in 2.5, now remember this is going to be made redundant, if you're watching this and 2.6 is out, it is redundant. So I, I have to burn the whole time, I space break about here, I release there, I go up here, I don't space break here at all, I just sort of take the curve. I rotate myself, obviously. I come through here, down here, try to get as low as possible, that way you're not turning as much. I just follow the curve around here, I space break a tiny bit there, go up here, space break again, release, 
and then go down and like I said those last two corners I should not be space breaking I should be trying to find a way to do that without space breaking but it still gets me a 41 second lap time which is decent it's not amazing I have got better than 41 using the same method it all comes down to repetition once you've got this point mastered it is just trying to push yourself to the limit so like I said finding how hard you can push yourself before blacking out because that is the ultimate challenge is sort of getting the timing so that you can push yourself without blacking out I'm probably gonna black out there let you know I didn't want I thought I was gonna black out but I, mean, I pushed myself a little bit harder so it's probably a little bit better though not really much and another thing you can do is try reduce the after uh, the space break there but obviously then you run into the risk of running into the building but if you can get that to a point where you use very little space break then uh, you will also shave down your time the key is using as little space break as possible but you do still have to space break and you do still have to make the call and my ship is going all over the place and there we go it finally destroyed itself uh, so yeah that's just a little bit of sort of advice a little bit of a tip just sort of going through how I developed as a racer and how I figured it out um, I wouldn't recommend trying to practice with the you know the fast race ships like the the 350R is extremely difficult to figure out, at least in 2.5. I'm not sure how it's going to change in 2.6, but in 2.5, the 350R is extremely hard to be good at. So if you're using a 350R and you're doing bad, then there is nothing wrong with that. I cannot race with a 350R. I've tried it several times, and I am terrible. And I could show you me racing with a 350R and that might make you feel a little bit better about your own abilities but I'm not going to. Um, racing ships that are really good is the the Mustang racing ships or the Omega or the is it the Gamma. Uh, those are very good for practicing because they are very forgiving ships they're not super fast ships and they fly very similar to a an M50 so if you're planning to upgrade from that Mustang to an M50. The Mustang is a great ship to learn with because you can develop similar habits that you will pick up as an M50 and it won't be as sort of drastic uh, learning curve for you and obviously with the slower speed it's it's more forgiving you can get away with some more mistakes and just try and get the best lap time you can with the Mustang and like I said practice in public races that way you're earning REC and you can try out some other ships because ships are very different and some people are going to be attached to certain racing ships and some people are going to be attached to other racing ships so some people will naturally be good at a 350R I know some people that are the complete opposite to me and they find the 350R really easy to fly and the M50 really difficult to fly because the M50 is very agile and it's very twitchy and responsive and it's very fast paced whereas the 350R is a little bit smoother and a little bit sort of more um, can't think of the word but it, it's smoother and it's more sort of it just responds a little bit smoother and it's not as twitchy you probably don't black out as much though with the high speeds it pulls you could probably easily black out in a 350R but I don't know much about a 350R I've only ever raced well I've only ever properly raced like where to the point where I've learnt how to race with the M50 and the Mustang uh, I tried a bit of the Zion Scout but I did not do well with that Zion Scout is okay, but it runs into issues with its size. It doesn't start properly in the race. And then getting through the checkpoints and getting through certain parts of the track is a little bit of a pain. So I wouldn't really recommend it for the tracks that we've got now. Perhaps in the future if we get sort of less obstructive tracks and we get bigger checkpoints, then it may be viable. But for now, I would stick to 
either the Mustang, the M50, or the 350R. All the snub fighters, the snub fighters are decent, but they do drift a lot compared to the 350R. So they are a little bit, in my opinion, harder. But like I said, it is down to practice, it's down to preference, and you will get a ship that you'll get used to. And I recommend sticking to that ship that you get used to because if you try and learn multiple ships then you're going to pick up bad habits from the way the other ships fly and you're not really going to master a ship. You're going to be sort of a jack of all trades and a master of none. So pick a ship that you like the most and just stick with it and just keep learning it and just master that ship to the point where you know that ship perfectly you know exactly how it's going to handle every corner every checkpoint every space raid you know all the response times you know how quick it's going to slow down you know how quick it's going to accelerate etc learn all of that and just keep practicing and i will do another tutorial a proper tutorial where i actually talk about techniques and and sort of you know when you should afterburn when you should boost and I will do other tracks but I will do that when 2.6 comes out because like I said I don't want to do a full-blown tutorial just because it's gonna be made redundant and I don't want to make a video that is gonna be made redundant in a few days time because that would feel like a waste of time because a lot of time and effort gets put into these videos and yeah like I said I don't want to make something that's just not going to be relevant in a few days time so that's all for this video. Hopefully this guy, uh, this video helps you out. Hopefully it sort of helps you with how I learn and maybe it can help you become a better racer in the future. And But that's all for me and I will see you guys in the next video. Laters, taters.